guys, today I'm gonna talk about the seven Ixlon cards that I'm most excited to play with. And I'm gonna begin number seven with Scuttle the Wreckage. Two double white, instant speed. Exile all attacking creatures, target player controls. That player may search his or her library for that many basic land cards. Put those cards onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle his or her library. This is an absolute blowout should your opponent go for the final kill. In standard, I do feel like this is very good. It is a one-sided God effect, a God, Wrath of God effect. And Wrath of God being one of the most iconic and even Day of Judgment being one of the better cards ever in standard. So to have a one-sided effect is very good. Now, obviously your opponent will see this coming a mile away and they might not play into it exactly like you would want them to. However, it is good enough in my opinion, and it should be very fun and limited. I am a big fan of one-sided effects, and in EDH, not bad, right? In EDH, not bad. Now, you could exile all attacking creatures you control, and then you can grab a ton of basic lands, but I don't know why you would want to do it. Uh, there's so many better ways to mana accelerate at four and EDH. I like one-sided combo. Combat tricks have long not, they have not been great unless they've been removal tricks, but I particularly like when you can bait your opponent into attacking you and they fall for this. So I like the concept of traps, right? Anyway, uh, the next card we are going to look at is a multicolored card. It is called Taihana Voice of Thunder. It is a legendary creature, Merfolk. It has power and toughness each equal to the number of cards in your hand. You have no maximal hand size. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card for each creature you control. I don't know what the casting cost is, but already it's a legendary Merfolk. I would guess it would be blue-green. It looks like blue-green to me from the colors of, on the card. However, I do like, I like this card a ton because not only is a legendary Merfolk, it is something that draws you cards and is very big. Drawing cards is super important in EDH. Obviously that should not be um, understated. And to have a commander that keeps drawing cards, that keep drawing cards, that's very good. So like commanders that go to command zone and you play them out and you get a bunch of cards, that's actually only gonna get stronger when you have more and more creature. Assuming you don't have, of course, your opponent doesn't have board wipe. I like it. I think it's overall a very exciting EDH. I'm always looking for more merfolks and merfolks that draw you cards are very good. The power and toughness, I mean, that's kind of interesting. That might have a lot to do with commander damage. If you can finish off your opponent uh, using this card, might be good enough, right? Might be good enough. Anyway, the next card we are going to look at is a captain. Admiral, I guess it's an Admiral, Beckett Brass. So love, I would love to see the artwork in this one. It just sounds like a fun card. It's a Pirate Lord. I am very excited to have Pirates in the set. Most likely Vraska will be a Pirate of some type from the artwork. Human and Pirate, other Pirates you control get plus one, plus one. It looks like it costs four and it is in Grixis, which is good. I love Grixis and there is a big bad dragon who's also Grixis, so yeah. At the beginning of your end step, gain control target non-line permanent controlled by a player who was dealt combat damage by three or more pirates this turn. So assuming pirates have some type of evasion, which we can assume, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep stealing stuff. And this is very good for an EDH against a player who just sits there and just mana accelerates, right? We all know that player and they're trying to mana accelerate into something like ridiculous and they don't really do anything and except draw more land. I'm very interested to see the pirate theme. Uh, we do know the mechanic is treasure. 
there is a small percentage. I did want to throw this out there. There is a small but talkable percentage of the fact that they might redo this set. It will cost a ton of money, but we know all the mechanics and we have, or some dude has all the mythics and rares. I'm sure that Jace and Vraska will eventually be spoiled very soon. So I don't know, maybe they redo it, maybe they don't, uh, who can tell? But I love the pirate theme. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean is a pretty cool movie and I've always uh, enjoyed that movie with uh, Karen Knightley. She's a great actress. Anyway, uh, the next one is a captain, Captain Lannery Storm. <laughs> Just the name makes me laugh. This is exactly what I would name a pirate. Uh, two in a red, legendary creature, human pirate, haste. It's a 2-2 whenever it attacks, you get a colorless treasure artifact token. Tap it, sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Uh, whenever you sacrifice a treasure, it gets plus one, plus zero until end turn. So I'm not going to talk about that ability. Why I feel like this is so good, the treasure ability, because there is a dude, his name is Nico Bolas, and he needs your treasure to play him. It truly is that simple. Nico Boles is a big baddie, and the, with these treasure mechanics, I have, I believe we can play him fast. And I love that concept. I When Emiko is the big baddie, we should play Emiko. When Kozilak is the big baddie, we need to play Kozilak. When vehicles are really bad, we need to play Smuggler Copter. So anything that makes Nico Boles, I'm hoping they play test this, right? Worst case scenario, no, Nico Boles gets banned. That would be horrific, and that's un. That would be un. I would be so shocked if that happened because it has happened so recently with Emiko, and then Aetherwork Marvel, which you could say yes or no. Guardian, which took out the Planeswalker. I mean that she's no longer seeing any place. So Healy Ra is a non-issue now, and she was the main Planeswalker of Kaladesh, right? She was on all the promotional materials, just like Emiko. And to ban that would be really bad. So I'm most ex excited for treasure for Nico Boles. Because my gut feeling is you will be able to play Nico Boles very fast. Which is exciting because then your opponent will play Nico Boles fast too. Alright, let's talk about this one. It is a Dinosaur Carnage Tyrant 6. Cannot be countered. Trample Hexproof. 7-6. A lot of you might be like, oh, why, is, why are we talking about this card? It doesn't look that great. It's just kind of a mech card. The Hexproof is very, very important on this type of card. It's just a big creature, a big dinosaur. It looks like it's a mythic from this picture, which would be questionable. But I am very excited for the dinosaurs, and hopefully the dinosaurs have some type of dinosaur lord, which would be really fun. It's kind of like they took Transformers and Pirates of the Caribbean and made it into like one movie. I will actually, or I guess um, Isabel will make a story plot. She's still training to get these stories down. I'm pretty sorry that you guys heard a few by now. And yeah, so that will be exciting. And yes, dinosaurs with no special abilities and no tap abilities and nothing. So yes. Oh, also, I um, we went to a game store today, and I met a friend. Uh, his name is Jeremy. It's not MTG headquarters. I've only met him once. I think he lives really far from Texas. Um, and Jeremy and I, have since four years ago, since I first started playing in the store, he's been a good friend, and now he has quit Magic. He may sell me his collection. He has a good collection. And since I'm like the only person who'll pay cash in this area, most people will give you store credit, which if you're trying to get out of the game, it's kind of like, no, I don't want store credit. Anyway, one of the more exciting cards for ED8s, and I would love to get a foil of this one, Shaper's Sanctuary. Uh, it's a green, it's an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control becomes a target of a spell ability and opponent controls, you may draw a card. This is every creature you have. So it's very good. Any one-sided effect, like I said previously, is very good. I like one-sided effects that you have to work your way around. This is kind of like the ghostly prison 
where, okay, it's a little harder to attack you, a little harder to kill your creatures because you're going to get a card. Let me target this other person who doesn't have this card on it. One green is extremely cheap. It's just so cheap that it's great. And one of the problems with cards like this in the past, when you had abilities like this in the past, it costs like too much, right? You need to plop this down on turn one and then just go for it. One to one replacement is very good in tempo. And I think this will be a all star in EDH. It's definitely gonna be one of the better cards. I totally expect it to be um, quite incredible and something that every EDH in green deck will want because targeting and killing stuff is very rampant, at least in my EDH playgroup. He's actually, um, Jeremy's actually interested in selling his EDH deck, which I'm interested in buying, of course. And lastly, let's talk about this card. Legendary Creature, one double blue, Kopala, Warden of Waves. Spells your opponent cast that target a merfolk you control costs one more to cast. Abilities your opponent's Activate that target and merfolk you control costs one more to activate. It's a 2-2. Now you might ask, huh, this card doesn't seem that great. Well, merfolks are an aggro card and protection from spells that target merfolks are very, very important. Or abilities. One of the things that I want to mention about this legendary creature is you have to rely on your merfolk lords these are just additional stuff and my gut feeling tells me that there will be a lot a lot of merfolk running around and you will be able to have a deck it's been a long time since we had a good deck like that i love blue decks and i love aggro decks and very, very few times do you have a blue aggro deck. And there's only one tribe, Merfolks, that can provide that to you on a consistent basis. What I'm hoping to happen is that if it's a mono blue, Merfolk deck, aggro. That is my favorite deck to play. I love all aggro decks. Boros being one of my... Boros being a very common aggro deck, but not my favorite ones. I like to stack Lord abilities onto other Lord abilities, and I love legendary creatures. I love the ability. I love attacking and having some evasion, having some pump spells. There's another Murfolk in this set that gives everything with a plus one plus one. Um, it cannot be blocked. That's the Murfolks I remember back in the day, and it's one of the classic decks that it's been a while since it's been good. And hopefully it is good. I remember playing this as uh, one of my first decks in beta. Uh, it wasn't that great. I mean, you were paying, playing a, a one-drop Merfolk for a 1-1, one, one, right? That was it, about it. Anyway, that's it, guys. Bye, guys.